Nestled between Himalayan mountains, Bhutan's airport is one of the world's most dangerous to land in. It's just one of the obstacles to get into the so-called happiest nation on earth. This is one of the most isolated countries on the planet, and it's really difficult and expensive to get in here. TV and internet was banned until 1999. That gives you an indication of how much of a hermit kingdom this place is. And it's famous for measuring gross domestic happiness. Everywhere you look, it's stunning, pristine scenery. More than 70% of this country is under forest cover because the government has mandated environmental preservation in its constitution. But behind this natural beauty and a world famous happiness philosophy, this is among the least developed countries in the world. And young people are leaving this place in major proportions, mainly to Australia. We've come here, we've been able to get inside these borders and we're going to speak to young people about why they're leaving. Kinle Funchu is a freelance writer and creative. A lot of his content is making fun of Bhutanese people who are desperate to get to Australia, saying there aren't opportunities here. Exhibit B, a high school dropout. Kinle is showing me a comedy video he made about the visa process to get there. This heavy miasma around Bhutan where we don't know what's going to happen. This unpredictable air is there. In the last year or so, 1.4% of Bhutanese people have migrated to Australia. That's a lot of people for a country of just 780,000. And Kinle wants to join them. The main reason I think a lot of people are leaving is because they, they, they don't think that they have the the ability or the opportunity to, to, to live a satisfied, content life in Bhutan. And they feel that they need to be abroad to get that. The scary part for Bhutan is that it's not just unemployed people looking for work that are leaving. It's also professionals. So the country's public service is understaffed and there's a shortage of doctors. Nice to meet you. I'm nice to meet you. So I went to meet Bhutan's Prime Minister, a surgeon by trade, who won the largest number of seats in Parliament in the country's history at the last election. He was frank, saying so many young people leaving is a concern. This combination of a least developed country, not having a, a 21st century industries, not able to meet the expectations of the educated youth, is the dilemma that we are going through. One thing everyone I spoke to agreed on was that Bhutanese people don't want to leave because they have such strong cultural ties. They just feel like they have to. Nobody wants to leave their country. Nobody wants to, you know, abandon their family here and go somewhere else and work there. A large part of that pride Bhutanese people have for their country comes back to their king. People see him as young, good looking and productive. This royal family is pretty different to others. The current king's father gave up power at the height of his popularity, turning Bhutan from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy with a parliament in 2008. He's also the king that made Bhutan the last country to get the internet. And he and his son have been seen as the modernizers of this country. But Bhutan still has one of the lowest GDPs. Its capital, Thimphu, is the only one in the world that doesn't have traffic lights, for example. So something that's made things kind of difficult for Bhutan is its geographical position. So from where I'm standing, north of here is China and south of here is India. It's a pretty awkward geopolitical place to be stuck between two major superpowers. And Bhutan and China have been negotiating their disputed border regions for decades. Bhutan's Prime Minister has told me that the country is close to settling that border with China. So we are drawing that line and in, we are drawing in the most harmonious way. We are, we are having a very peaceful dialogue, very friendly relation, friendly dialogue. <laughs> That would raise alarm bells among countries like India and China. And now, Australia has sent a minister to the kingdom for the first time. We want to convey to Bhutan that, you know, while Bhutan may be a smaller country in the region, all countries play a role in building the kind of region that we want to live in. 
In a small country where devotion to the king is so ingrained among society, it was difficult to find people who would openly discuss the problems in Bhutan. Self-censorship is a major part of the country's culture. But some told us they want more interaction with Beijing, like Cheki Dorji, a travel agent who's keen for more Chinese travellers. If Bhutan opened up with China and uh, if he started doing marketing and have an economic partner as China, I think Bhutan can develop at a greater pace. Bhutan's facing an existential crisis. It can either reckon with its isolationist history and open up to develop this country, or it can continue down the same path it's on, losing young people overseas. But there's a big push to develop this country. So it goes from being one of the poorest to one that is actually full of the happiest people on earth. My hope is that maybe one day we will start pushing towards newer ideas and being more accepting of everyone's ideas regardless of where they stand in the social hierarchy.